Hey Matia, what are you working on today? Hi, um, today I'm checking out two 1176s um, F revision prior to servicing and overhauling. So what I'm doing, I'm just connecting them to uh, the Neutrik A2 and just seeing what level I get out of it, distortion, noise uh, and so on and so forth. Um, what I think is interesting about these compressors is that um, they are um, classic, classic compressors and they went through uh, quite a few revisions from A to H and they all have their own slightly differences but um, in terms of the type of compressor and what the effect is they are all very similar to each other. There are a couple of things that I think is worth noting about these guys and the main, the main reason why they sound the way they do is because of the building blocks uh, which are very unique and distinct. So, in my experience, what creates most of the sound is the output stage and the compression type. This is a very specific case because this is the first one that they had that was class A, B output. But all the others and um, up to revision E, they all were class A output. So they had one transistor driving the output transformer, whilst this one has got two in push-pull. So if you, sh if you come closer, I'll show you. If we want to try and divide it into um, the building blocks, how it's built, it's very easy to see that this is the power supply stage or section. So you have the power transformer there, all the, all the diodes there to rectify, the zener there, and the capacitors that supply uh, the board. So that's your power supply section. And you can see this is the output section with the output transformer, the two transistors that drive that transformer. So this is an AB push-pull uh, version instead of just having one transistor like I was mentioning earlier on. Then you have all the line amp there, meter driving, that's a 5534 basically, or an LM301. Um, then you have the FET there that does the gain reduction, the input transformer right there, that's the input transformer and the input pad. So the way this thing is designed, um, which is very clever, of course, um, it's based around um, an 1108, actually I think this is the 1109 line amplifier. So this has got a fixed gain of 40 dB across. And all you do is you attenuate the input or the output. So this has got a fixed gain, there's no gain as such, or preamp gain. And what you do, you drive the input stage more or less to achieve more or less gain reduction. And it's a fixed threshold uh, compressor. So what it means is that you can't really change the level of the threshold. Although, if you read the manual, which I, I kindly advise everyone to do because it's really interesting, especially the, um, the newer universal audio one has got a ton of information and they tell you what kind of um, revisions were built, what serial numbers there were, it's very interesting to read. So going back to the threshold, there's one thing that changes the level of the threshold on this compressor and it's the ratio. So the threshold goes up as you go up in the ratio. So that's my lowest threshold and then it goes up as you go into higher ratios. Ever so slightly, you're talking about 2, 3 dB, no more than that, but it's, that's what changes the threshold level. Another thing that is worth noticing on this, on this guy, it's the side chain. Now, I should unplug it really first before I put my fingers into it, just in case. I want to get electrocuted. The side chain, it's the interesting bit of it because it uses two diodes, so it's a half sine wave, and two uh, tantrum capacitors to fit into the side chain. So that's what creates the very, very unique type of compression that only this type of compressor has. Um, and if I show you quickly on the schematic, I'm just going to plug it back in because I want to show you how much gain this thing has. Uh, so if I show you the schematic, it's always interesting to see. That's your power supply stage, right there. So that's your transformer, the four diodes, the bulbs that go onto the meter, 
the zener, the big zener on the heat sink, and that's the zener that controls the minus 10 for the meter drive. So if we go that way, this is the gain reduction meter drive amp. So that's where it takes the voltage from. Interesting to note as well is that as you come into the circuit, the first thing that the, you hit is the T attenuator, which is the input pot. So that's the very first thing that any signal sees before you even get into the transformer. So what that does, it's a pretty much, well, not pretty much, it is a balanced attenuator, a T attenuator, that keeps the imp impedance constant. So anything that you feed into it will always see the same impedance. In this case, it's 600 ohm. So you get into the attenuator, you get into the transformer, and then the fact that does the gain reduction is there. Very interesting. So you're not amplifying anything. You're getting straight into here. And what this does is as you push signal into it, it pulls the signal towards ground. So it's actually shunting whatever you fit in into ground. That's what does the, the gain reduction. And then you have the signal preamp, three transistors, the output gain, sorry, it's called the output gain, but it's actually an output attenuator, and the signal lineup that then drives with the two push-pull transistors, the output transformer. So that's, that's a very, very clever design right there. All of this is connected to the gain control amp, or the side chain, with the ratio buttons. It's amazing. This is what the Univer 1176 is. And just to prove that this has got 40 dB of gain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten out input and output put it out of gain reduction, doesn't really matter that, but, and I'm going to feed signal into it until it starts clipping. So at the moment, if you look here, <coughs> my generator, which is set at 1 kilohertz, is now feeding into it minus 10 dB, roughly minus 9. And what I'm getting out of it with all the controls full on is 33.9. So you're looking at roughly 43, 44 dB of gain. So that's the fixed gain that this, this system as such has got before going into clip. So if you look on the oscilloscope, this is absolutely clear. There's no clipping happening. As soon as I push up a bit, you'll notice that that starts clipping. Let me just do that so it's easier to see. See that? And the more you push, the more clipping you get. How interesting is that? How interesting is this? <coughs> one thing that I tend to do with this, if I if I have an extra one, um, is that I, I completely skip the the preamp. When I'm recording drums, for instance, that, that there's a lot of SPL happening. I get a 57 snare, normal, typical snare microphone. Instead of going through a preamp, because this has got 40 dB of gain now, it's not cleaner when you push 40 dB, but it's still 40 dB is a really interesting gain. And you can see that class A or class AB. I take the 57, shove it straight onto the input, input full blast, output full blast, compression off, and then I tune the output to match the level of Pro Tools, so you get a really crunchy sound out of it. Worth a try. So that's my trick for today. And that's it, really. You don't say anything, Mark. Are you having a bad day or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right.